Humphreys. This is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. We are powered by Right Wing News. You can find us also live on Liberty One TV and a number of other great Facebook pages. Also, we are sponsored by a great app that I hope that you will follow me on. It is called Hear Me Out, the Hear Me Out app. You just uh, go to your uh, wherever you uh, iTunes store or if you've got the Google Play, whatever, Google uh, Android store. Uh, you download it to your phone and it's like Twitter, but it's for talking and it's the messages are a maximum 42 seconds. And I upload stuff a couple times a day. Uh, we're giving away prizes on there, $100 gift cards and other things. Uh, just go there and follow me, Rusty Humphreys. And if you sign up, uh, do me a favor, post something and type in hashtag Rusty on your message and I'll follow you and I'll uh, take a listen to what you have to say. And if you don't want to talk, that's fine too, but we'll get you into a drawing. Okay. All right. So first of all, let's see here. Let's do some check-ins. I'm looking at an American journal review where we're also on. And for some reason we're not, I, I don't see the, the comments. Well, that's, Oh, there we go. There we are. I want to say hi to the folks in American journal review too. All right. Sue's there. Let's see here. Chris thinks we're a bunch of wussies. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Sue says I've got no pictures. All right. That's on American Journal at uh, the Right Wing News. Let's see here. We've got a lot of folks here. Gail checking in from Maine. Jessica says, hey, Rusty, I'm a bored deplorable from Illinois. Why the heck am I typing that? You know that already. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Michael thinks that book is a crock of bull. Ruth is in Arizona. Troy says Oprah Winfrey would disagree on what? Uh, let's see. Danielle's in Michigan. Jessica says it's 13 degrees in St. Louis. Jess, another Jessica has shared the video. By the way, don't forget, share the video. Check in. Give me some thumbs up, some hearts. Give us some love. I want to see uh, who's there because it's Friday. And I don't normally do the show on Friday because there's just not a lot of people that tend to be sitting around Facebook wanting to watch a show. But you know what? I spent all day long, oh gosh, all day long with this book, this book, this silly, this, this book, Fire and Fury inside the Trump White House, this book, hours and hours and hours have I spent with this book. Now, I went into it with a very open mind, and I'll tell you why. I know that things in the Bush, in the Trump White House, haven't been perfect. And I also know there were a ton of leaks before, and there aren't many leaks right now. I know Steve Bannon personally, I have for years. I know a number of people that are in the Trump White House, and I know a lot of people that worked on the campaign. So I know a lot of the players, and I know a lot of the behind the scenes stories. So. When there are stories that I know are true, I'll go, okay, well, I mean, that's true. Now, I, I'm not going to say I know everything that's happened there. But there's some very interesting reasons why I think what I think about this book, and I'll tell you what that is in just a second. Um, quickly, Paul is from San Jose. It's 56 degrees. Miriam checking in. Danielle says it's 5 degrees in southwest Michigan. Joe is saying it's minus 4 degrees in southern Minnesota. Ken says, Rusty, I haven't heard you in a long time. I'm here every night, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West. You don't want to miss it. Diane loves our president. Um, let's see here. Troy says, Oprah Winfrey would disagree with me. I'm sure she would. Michael is a deplorable from Westchester County, New York. Uh, Michigan, deplorable. Temperatures, negative 2. Real frozen, feeling negative 12. Ugh. James says, don't buy the book of lies by an insane person. Well, I bought the book so you don't have to. But I'm not going to allow the media to tell me what is true or what's not true, whether it's the liberal media or the, or the conservative media. I don't want either Trump haters or Trump lovers 
to tell me what to think. I am a thinking person. I support President Trump, but if I thought President Trump was uh, committing fraud or treason or was insane, I would say it. Just like I thought that Barack Obama did a lousy job, it wasn't because he was a Democrat, it's because he was a lousy president. So we have to do not what the liberals do, and that is blindly follow the leaders. What we have to do, and what is smart, is for us to say we're going to do our homework, we are going to uh, take a listen to what uh, the president has to say, uh, we will watch and listen and pay attention. If he does the right thing, we will support him. If he does the wrong thing, we will criticize him. Alberto says, I love my Presidente. Jimmy is in Dallas. Donald says, Rusty, it's a balmy 10 degrees there in Roanoke, Virginia. Carol says, it is zero in Blue Mounds, Wisconsin. James says, I'm sick of Clinton getting away with murder. Agree with that. Let's see here. Honest, because it fits your beliefs. LOL. Well, yeah. I just want to be honest. Again, I'm a conservative because I believe that those values and those economic issues were on the right side. If I was proven wrong, see, here's the difference. Democrats get proven wrong time and time and time again. Global warming, uh, their economic policies, uh, illegal immigration. They get proven wrong over and over and over again. But they can never admit to being wrong. See, I saw this meme today. I thought this one was great. Who are the real racists? Well, let's see. In 1863, Democrats said, without slaves, who will pick our crops? In the year 2018, 2017, it says here, without illegals, who will pick our crops? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Carol says, I support our president thinking he's more help in Congress than the Senate. Okay, so here is the guy. Uh, he was interviewed on uh, the Today Show. Um He's the author of this book. I'll let you listen to what he has to say. This was edited by the Media Research Center where they're showing his bias a little bit. But I'll let you, I'm going to report, you decide, and then I'll tell you what I've found, and then we can talk about it. Okay? So let's play the audio here and the video on the Rusty Henry's Rebellion. Obviously, as you know, tweeted about you last night. He says, I authorized zero access to the White House, actually turned you down many times, said he never spoke to you for the book. It's full of lies, misrepresentations, and sources that don't exist. So as good a place to start as any. Did you talk to the what, president? What was I doing there if, um, um, if he didn't want me to be there? Well, let me ask you, did you talk to the president? Did you interview him for this book? I, 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 absol I absolutely spoke to the president, whether he realized it was an interview or not. Um, I, I don't know, but it certainly was not off the record. I am Hold on, let's, let's, just, let's just stop that one right there. Did you interview the president? Now he pauses. Uh, well, I, 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 I talked this, to this him. I, 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 absol I absolutely spoke to the president, whether he realized it was an interview or not. Um, I, I don't know, but it certainly was not off the record. Okay. That's not a very good answer. That could have been he saw him on the street and went, hey, Mr. President. Well, I talked to him. Now, the one thing I will agree with him on, and the one thing that... First spoke to you for the book. It's full of lies, misrepresentations, and sources that don't exist. So as good a place to start as any. Did you talk to the what, president? What was I doing there if, um, um, if he didn't want me to be there? Well, okay. That's where I'll agree with the author. When President Trump says, well, I didn't know the guy and I didn't give him any access. Mr. President, if, if he was there in the building, you had to have said yes. OK, let, let's let's be honest here. OK, you may not have liked what he put out there. And at this point, I don't either. But we got to be honest on both sides. From what I understand, the guy was in the Oval Office. You had to have said yes. 
Now, you got to know better. And I've told, I talked about this yesterday. I've talked about it uh, in the time before. I tell this to my VIP media clients. Whenever you get a call from a liberal journalist, they'll always do the same thing. Hey, man, you're my favorite. Uh, don't tell anybody, but I'm going to write a real soft piece on you because I like you. Sure, I'm a liberal, but I like you and I want your message to get out and be true. They're lying. Never, ever, 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 ever believe one of these liberal journalists. They are liars. And he'll admit to it in this video in just a second. But don't ever believe them. Okay? That's the first mistake the Trump White House did by allowing this guy any access. Um, anyway, I'll give, let's just let him talk for a second. Well, let me ask you, did you talk to the president? Did you interview him for this book? I, 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 abso I absolutely spoke to the president, whether he realized it was an interview or not. Um, I, I don't know, but it certainly was not off the record. I am certainly in absolutely in every way comfortable with everything I've reported in this book. Would you release any of those recordings since your credibility is being questioned? I, my, my credibility is being questioned by a man who has less credibility than perhaps anyone who has ever walked on earth at this point. Okay. You stand by everything in the book, nothing made up. Absolutely everything in the book. Your former editor at Vanity Fair, Graydon Carter, said he wasn't surprised you'd written this explosive book. He was surprised they let you in the door at the White House. <laughs> Are you surprised? I, you know, um, uh, uh, no, I'm a nice guy. I go in. <laughs> Did and, you flatter um, your way in? I certainly said what was ever necessary to get the story. Okay, so like I said, he lied to get in. And I knew that the second I heard the book was being written. Okay, this is what the left does. And for some reason, conservatives fall for it all the time. And uh, you get burned every single time. Never believe a guy like this. Ever, 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 ever. Okay. Here's the thing about the book that I have found in the eight chapters that I've gone through. Like I said, I didn't read it. I've been listening to the audio book. Um, some people learn better reading. Some people learn better through audio. I'm an audio guy. So I think I bought the book about 8 a.m. this morning and have spent almost seven, eight hours listening to it. The problem with the book is the author is automatically not credible. They say, what are you talking about, Russ? You're just buying into the Trump lies and you, you're just a, a right-wing shill for the Trump administration. That's not what I mean. It is written with commentary by the author or words that are thrown in that could have been written by Rachel Maddow. This is a book written with red meat for the far left-wing crowd. This is a book that is written for people that hate Donald Trump. Uh, I'll give you an example off the top of my head. Um, they're talking about there was a billionaire that spoke for Donald Trump at the RNC. And I, again, I'm listening, it's off of memory, so I'm paraphrasing, but he said, and the billionaire went up there and he gave a positive, rousing speech, unlike the rest of the GOP convention, which was dark and angry. Okay, see right there, that's all you need. But it was more like that. It was, it was a little bit of fact and then commentary by the author that is written as if it is fact but it is, in fact, commentary. It is why, the, as Sarah Palin would say, the lamestream media is lame today because it's never down the middle. It's not just telling the story. Now, there are a lot of quotes by guys like Steve Bannon. There are quotes by Rupert Murdoch. There are quotes by um, oh, a, a lot of people. And then there are stuff that's done on background. What a, a very good liar does is they use crumbs of the truth and they sprinkle them in 
And then they toss in every once in a while a lie. And that lie seems credible because everything else around it has been real. That's what this book is. I think there is some honest backstabbing that went on in that White House, especially in the first year. But here's the other thing that I found fascinating. Um, And it is very obviously the class warfare that I think we're fighting and one of the reasons why Donald Trump got elected. In almost every chapter, there are snide comments in, and I don't want to say almost every page, but in most of the pages. Well, that guy has no had no ex- experience in government. That guy had no experience in government. This was his first job in government. Um, they didn't know anything about government. Over and over and over and over again. In this person's mind the only way to be a success or a great man or woman is to have been in government. And there's no possible way that the Trump administration, the people that Trump brought in could know anything of what they were doing because none of them had been in government before. That's the problem. Feel like Tom Cruise in, in uh, uh, top gun. That's why I'm dangerous. That's why I'm dangerous. That's why Trump's dangerous. He's dangerous because you elites don't understand. They they just they don't they don't get it. They think you're so stupid. And by the way, oh here's the other part that I found fascinating. According to the book, they never wanted to win. Shh, Trump never wanted to win. It was all like the movie and the play, the musical, the producers. The whole idea, according to the book, was if Trump runs for president, then he could become more famous and richer. And Steve Bannon could take over the Tea Party. And Kellyanne Conway could get a great job on Fox News. And so on and so on and so on. No one thought he was going to win, according to the book. No one wanted him to win. Trump didn't want to win. He wanted to get richer because he wanted to be more on TV, according to the book. Well, let's be honest now. Trump had the number one TV show for, what, 15 seasons? Over 10 years. Number one TV show. Okay? That's number one. Number two. He talks about when Trump won, that there was an elation. And then Trump looked like he was scared. And then as it sat, as it sunk in that he won, he looked terrified. Well, you know what? I would hope so. I would hope anybody once they were elected to be president of the United States, they would realize the incredible responsibility of being the most powerful human being on the planet. Now, the ego of people like Barack Obama, who, by the way, was the least experienced guy in whatever room he was in before he was president of the United States. This guy, Barack Obama, who they're all loving, and by the way, oh, I guess David Letterman. Remember when David Letterman was funny? I know that was a long time ago and you've probably forgotten, but uh, David Letterman was a talk show host and he used to be funny. Well, David Letterman has a new show coming up on Netflix and guess who his first guest is going to be? Yep, Obama. Remember when Letterman was funny? Yeah, that was a long time ago. I used to like Letterman. Barack Obama did absolutely nothing. He did nothing in the Senate. He did nothing, uh, he, and here's, you know, like Barack Obama was the great uh, warrior for the underclass. Barack Obama was the great African-American leader. He was in the United States Senate for two years and then ran for president. There's a place in Washington, D.C. called Ben's Chili Bowl. It's in not the nicest part of D.C., And 
They serve chili and, and hot dogs. They got a hot dog called a half smoke. And it is a civil rights iconic location. Because back in the 60s, there were riots and people took cover at Ben's Chili Bowl. And ever since then, it's this iconic place in Washington, D.C. You know how I knew Barack Obama was full of crap? Because he went to Ben's Chili Bowl in the first month he was president of the United States. Now, if you are a true civil rights icon... It would have been the first place you went on the first time you went to Washington, D.C. He didn't go as a Illinois senator. He didn't go when he was in college. He didn't go when he was a civil rights uh, activist. He didn't go for two years when he was a United States senator. He waited until he was president of the United States to go to one of the most iconic civil rights places in America. That told me what a phony he was. And it also tells me what a phony he is when everybody says, oh, he was calm and cool, collected. Oh, when he became president of the United States, he was, he was ready. Oh, he was. No, he wasn't. He could have been in a room of seven-year-old kids um, doing lemonade stands. He still would have been the, less, the, the least qualified guy in that room. Okay? Now, what this book is trying to say is that Trump ain't no nothing. Trump doesn't read. Trump doesn't listen to anybody. All he does is watch Fox and Friends in the morning. And here's another one that tells you uh, that this book is biased. So far, one of the great voices of reason to Donald Trump is Joe Scarborough and his girlfriend Mika. They're the great voices of reason. They would call and talk to President Trump. And, and, and there's one time where President Trump is talking to him and Joe says, well, who do you have around you? Who's, who's, who do you bounce ideas off? Who do you talk to? And Trump says, you know what, Joe? I have myself. I do it all myself. Which alarmed poor Joe. And that made him know that Donald Trump was crazy. Okay. This is all silly. And I spent most of my day, and I will finish this book because I want to give an honest review. Do I think that Steve Bannon got ticked off at the president? Yep. Do I think that he and Jared Kushner didn't like each other? I do believe that. Do I think Jared Kushner is you know, over his head? I do believe that. Do I think Donald Trump is in over his head? In some ways, yes. But so is anybody who takes that job. Unlike the author, though, I don't think a, a lack of, of, uh, of political life is a downfall. George Washington had never been president before. He did pretty good. He had... I don't think he held any political office. I think he went right from the battlefield to being president of the United States. He had no political training. See, the problem I have with the elite class and the problem I have with douchebags like uh, Mr. Wolf and the problem I have with douchebags in the Democrat Party and all of these people in the political class is their whole lives are based around politics. They don't live real lives. They don't go out and do things like you and I do. They don't work menial jobs. They didn't work at uh, uh, you know, doing paper routes like I did when I was a kid or Dunkin' Donuts or work at a radio station or work cleaning up the parking lot of movie theater. Most of them come from big money. And all day long, they just sit around and talk about theories. And most of the theories don't work. Donald Trump, on the other hand, whether you like him or not, this is a guy that had to go out there and build buildings and create a company. Oh, he got a bunch of money from his daddy. His daddy gave him all that money. His father gave him a loan, gave him a little bit of a head start. But usually that second generation loses most of the money. 
Okay? So that's my thought here. Let's uh, get your takes here. Let's see here. Carmen says, that book is full of biased opinions and speculation, and here you have these thirsty liberals foaming at the mouth. Again, this is going to be, and this is one of the reasons why I want to read this book. The left is going to love this book because he speaks in their language. He's using the same words that Rick Maddow, that guy that looks like Chandler from Friends on MSNBC, would use. This is not an honest journalist. If it was an honest journalist and he was giving the real behind-the-scenes story with no opinion thrown in, or every once in a while, I'd say, you know what, there's some things here, you know, we could probably learn from it. But that's not what this book is. This book is a hit piece from beginning to end. And shame on this author. Shame on this author. And I would have said it, by the way, if he would have done it to Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, or anybody. This is not a piece of journalism. This is a work of one guy's opinion who may have had some access. I don't believe he had a ton of access. Uh, Trump was stupid to let him in the White House ever. Take a look at this guy again. Oops. Yeah, good looking guy. Real winner. Although I did see him in, uh, in another movie. I don't know if you remember that one. I, I think all we're missing is a little cat. One million dollars. <laughs> Let's see. Carmana says somebody should write a book debunking Wolf's book. I'm not going to write a book, but I'm debunking it for you right here. Piece by piece. Miriam says true about Georgian politics. Reagan says the, they politicize everything. Everything. It could be a complete nothing burger, and they had to politicize it. Like the shooting in Vegas had nothing uh, political to do. It was a tragedy, but the left uh, was an opportunity to, to attack the Second Amendment. You know, the only thing I might say on that one, is uh, on the shooting in Vegas. If... First of all, the leads have gone cold. The police have been silent for weeks. We did hear that the guy was a far lefty. Lost a bunch of money. Country concert. Full of what he thought could be a bunch of Trump lovers get back at Trump lovers while he uh, goes out in a blaze of glory. Let's not forget, that was during the peak of Antifa time. And by the way, have we heard much from Antifa since then? Man, they've been awful quiet, haven't they? So I'm not trying to politicize things, but I'll tell you what, here's my theory. Here's my theory. I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but... If I'm the chief of police and I find out that that SOB who killed a bunch of people had a bunch of far left-wing propaganda, he was a big Antifa guy, and I think that's going to start an American Civil War, I might keep it quiet too. Would you? Would you keep that quiet? I don't want an American Civil War. But some kind of an act like that where it is political and they go and shoot up uh, people just because of their uh, political views, whew, that's scary to me. All right, let's see here. Ruth says, and you are helping him by giving him a lot of airtime. I'm telling you about the book and I'm telling you not to buy it. I'm trying to give you as much information so you don't have to go out and buy this book. But whatever. Uh, Jessica thinks that it was a setup. The Las Vegas shooting was a setup. Tina thinks our president has done a great job. Pat wants to know why don't they help with PTSD benefits? The veterans can't get it. Why not? Does the book say why the veterans can't get PTSD benefits? Uh, no, Pat, I, I don't believe that the book talks about PTSD. Um, I certainly 
support uh, veterans who've been through such a tough time. But they're and and I, I was going to say, but some but some of them do get benefits and get help. I I but I got to be honest, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but I've had a number of friends who have come back from Iraq and Afghanistan, PTSD, had some help. I don't know much more we can do. I, I, I think that we should give them as much help as possible, though. So it's a fair question. Maureen loves this way we're going here. Thank you very much. Have you given me some thumbs ups yet? Have you shared this video? We have not shared this video be shared enough today. This is an important one. Because there's so much crap being put out there. And all weekend long you watch. It is going to be a celebration of this book. And how stupid Donald Trump is. And how out of touch Donald Trump is. And how all of the people around Trump hate him. You watch and see. But I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you from a guy that knows people that were there. I'm telling you from a guy that understands how these books are written. I believe that there have been some sprinklings of truth. I do believe that there were people that wanted to get back at each other by leaking some information. And I think he took those little crumbs and his hatred of Donald Trump. And it's very clear. That's the problem with the book. The book is very clear from the beginning. The author hates Donald Trump. There was nothing in this book that was journalistic. There was nothing in this book that made me go, oh, the author is just trying to tell the story. This whole book is there to tell you Donald Trump is stupid. Donald Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Donald Trump has no business being there, and he probably should be hauled away for being a crazy person. And by the way, he's a sexual deviant in the first eight chapters. And everybody around him's dumb and everybody around him hates him. It's funny. If Donald Trump was such a sexual deviant, wouldn't we have heard from people that were had left the administration by now? Wouldn't we have heard from people that didn't get paid by somebody that was associated with Gloria Allred or her daughter? And if it was an honest media... Would they not be talking about big stories of the day like the economy or uh, black unemployment rate falls to record lows? Overall unemployment, 4.1%. That's a big, big deal. Nope, don't want to talk about that. Actually, they'll say, well, that was, uh, that was the Obama economy. Don't friggin' lie to me. The Obama economy has been over for over a year. We are finally seeing upticks in this economy that we didn't see for eight years. And finally, you know, we're breaking records in the Dow and, you know, finally things are are, are going better. And black unemployment rate, which was abysmal under Obama. So let's, all I'm asking people to do whether you like Trump or hate Trump, is to be honest. To be honest with yourself. To be honest with the facts. To be honest about this president. To be honest about the achievements. Do I think Donald Trump has a big ego? Yeah. Do I think Donald Trump knew how to pass legislation when he came in? No. I don't. I don't think he needs to. We wanted a guy. Well, you guys are stupid. You, you've got to... Uh, pre- I'm sorry. <clears throat> Do it like an elitist. Well, you're stupid then. Because you need a president that understands all of the processes. Be able to go and be political and use his political p- uh, powers of persuasion to get what he wanted done. We have done that and done that and done that. And look at the crap hole that you elitists have dug for all of us to dig you out of. I'm Barack Obama. I'm going to spend more money. All presidents combined, we're going to have shovel right jobs. A year, couple years later after the money was spent, well, those shovel right jobs weren't shovel right as we thought. Well, where the hell did the money go? But he's genius. Barack Obama's a genius. Barack Obama breaks laws and gives billions of dollars to Iran 
the world's biggest sponsor of terrorism. He's a genius. Right? People rot in jails in North Korea under Obama. He's a genius. They get uh, more and more weapons and technology in North Korea under Obama. He a genius. Donald Trump comes in, probably going to tear up that Iranian deal. He's an idiot. Donald Trump comes in and says, um, I'm not going to pretend that Jerusalem isn't the capital of Israel. It's been for 40 years, 50 years. What are you and all the other presidents before me said they were going to do this. They didn't. I'm not going to lie to the American people. Oh, but Trump's the dummy. Donald Trump says, I'm not going to trust China and North Korea. I'm going to hold them accountable. He's the dummy. See, we have to start reevaluating in this country, especially in the elite levels, what is smart and what is stupid. Because I believe what y'all in the elites have been doing has been really stinking stupid. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think the elites in this country have been really stinking stupid? Sitting around, talking to themselves, telling each other how smart they are, and really getting nothing done except, well, causing us to pay more in taxes, making our country less safe, having our children all... I mean, how many kids do you know have anxiety problems today? Where's that come from? Uh, I'll tell you where that comes from. Their whole lives, they've been telling, they've been been told by uh, the media that uh, they're going to die and that they're never going to have it as good as their parents and that the world is terrible and global warming is going to kill them or global cooling is going to kill them and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. That's what the liberals have done. Look at the cities that liberals are running. Look at Seattle, what a mess Seattle is, with tent cities strung out for miles of homeless people smoking the, the, the legalized dope and shooting up the heroin. But it's the unwashed masses like you and me. We're stupid. Nancy says, I agree with you. I felt that a civil war would be imminent due to the uh, depth of hate. And I hope not. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying God forbid. God forbid that that happens. Nancy says, thumbs up. Tina, thank you. Reagan said, if you read Clinton Cash, you know it was the real foul-mouthed, entitled nutbag. She was condescending and cursed like a sailor, sailor the whole time she was first lady and secretary. And it's not just a Clinton Cash. There's a number of books that have come out like that, uh, Reagan, that, that talked about that. And you're absolutely right. And by the way, did you see that the Senate now is uh, going to start, is, is starting to ask questions? It's about stinking time. Where'd that story go? Senators want criminal investigation of the Trump dossier author. That's from The Hill. Two Republican senators are asking the uh, Department of Justice to open a criminal investigation into Christopher Steele, the author of the controversial research dossier on President Trump. And by the way, in the book so far, like I said, I'm on like chapter eight or something. Uh, they're using this dossier like it is gold, like it's telling the truth. Senators Chuck Grassley and Lindsey Graham sent a letter to the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and FBI Director Christopher Wray asking that they investigate if the former British intelligence agents lied to federal authorities. Grassley said in a statement, I don't take lightly making a referral for criminal investigation, but as I would on any credible evidence of a crime unearthed in the course of our investigation, I feel obliged to pass that information along to the Justice Department for appropriate review. Good for you. It's about dang time. And if they actually do their investigation, you're going to see the Clinton fingers all over it. Clinton fingerprints are everywhere. Now, unfortunately, they never get held accountable. Never. And you might as well just give that up, unfortunately. But, um... 
Maybe something will get done. Maybe. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's see here. Uh, Tammy says this book is treason. The book's not treason. Okay? It is... There, there are always books about the White House, people who leave the White House and they tell stories. Um, not many about Obama. They, I mean, they worshipped him. But there are plenty about Clinton. There were plenty about Bush. Uh, Johnson had books about him, Reagan. Uh, it, it's not treason. It's not betraying the country. It's betraying a president. Um, but he's different than the country. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like that it's been, you know, the lies. If, again, if it was more truthful and it was more of a journalistic exercise of here's what really happened. And yes, this is one guy's opinion. Here's another guy's opinion, but not just the author's opinion. It would have been a book worthwhile. Uh, there are the books. Uh, what were they called? There was a, there was there were books written on the campaigns. Uh, over the past few years by the same couple of guys. And those were pretty good books. Um, again, you may not agree with everything, but they were a lot more honest than this book is. Terry wants to know, what's going on? What is going to take to make liberals see the damage they have done and are doing? I really just don't get where they are coming from. You have to understand a little more psychology of what's going on. Because the media, and that includes movies and TV and news and the internet and the echo chamber on the left, what they are masters at is the generation of emotion. Democrats are experts at capitalizing on emotion. And when you take a listen to almost anything they talk about, it generally comes from an emotional point of view. I talk about that in my book, Seven Ways to Win Political Debates with Your Liberal Family and Friends and Still Keep Them as Family and Friends, which is available at Amazon, and it's in Kindle and paperback and at Audible. It's not a big book. You could read it in a day or two. It's something that conservatives are not very good at. Liberals use emotion. We got to do it for the children. We got to do it for the health, for the old people. We have to, it's, it's feelings, okay? Emotion. It feels good to feel bad, right? And so, Terry, they don't, the average everyday Democrat, they're very good people, Okay. I'm talking about most union people or people who don't really pay a lot of attention, but they're Democrats because mama was a Democrat and daddy was a Democrat and grandpa was a Democrat and Democrats fight for the little guy and Republicans fight for big business is what they've been told. They don't realize the Democrat party left them behind a long time ago. This Democrat part party is about fundamental change of America. This Democrat Party, not that long ago, would have been called the Communist Party. But we can't use that word anymore. You can sort of use socialist, but not much. Today's Democrat Party, under Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, and all these other people, they are more about the power for themselves than they are for what is in the best interest of the country. And that is the same with the elites. Again, what is communism? Communism isn't about the people working together. It's about a group of few you know, running the world and telling you what you can and can't do. It's about, it's about control. Isn't the lack of freedom of speech on college campuses all about the lack of control? Isn't that what the safe space is? It's about control. Isn't that what's going on on Facebook and Twitter with the silencing of conservative speech? That's about control. And that's what the communists were about. It's what socialists are about. You see, what capitalists generally are about is, hey, we want to see the best guy win. And we want to see you work hard so maybe you could be the best guy. I know I want to be the best guy. 
and we have a fair playing field. And that doesn't mean that the government comes in and picks winners and losers. It's about laws making it even. Now, I'll say one thing. I think that we have allowed companies to get too big. When you got the banks that were too big to fail, that's a problem. I think the idea that Disney is going to buy Fox, I think that's a problem. I think Amazon is too big. I think Facebook and Twitter are too big. They have too much control over our lives and not enough control over them. Do you agree? or do, If you agree, you think I'm right, you think that those things are too big, thumbs up. If you think, no, 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 Rusty, that's not the uh, you know free market. Let it, If they get big, then they get big. Give me a frowny face. I wonder what you think. Mary says every week they try to come up with anything to overshadow uh, Trump's accomplishments. Um, Mary, uh, Trump is married to Melania. Look at those paid accusers. What Look what they look like. Why would somebody go out after a hamburger when they can have steak every night? Oh, in the book he talks about that. That Trump and Melania's marriage is just a sham. I don't know that I buy that. Terry Lynn says, I've been a Democrat since Reagan. My party left me and my values a long time ago, which is why I have the papers in to change parties. Good for you. Let's see. Ken says, Democrats are masters of redirection of views. Eh, You could say that as well, too, but it's a master of manipulation. Uh, Ken's off to bed. Let's see here. Anne-Marie loves the show. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, let's see, Randy, we trusted them, but finally wised up. My name, my name's Rusty, by the way, R-U-S-T-Y. Anyway, you've got a lot of great comments here. Do me a favor. Let's see here. Jeffrey says, you're exactly right, Rusty. I'm waiting for them to shut you down for speaking the truth. Well, they are shutting me down. They are making it so that far, far less people see this show than should. You know, with all of the Facebook pages I'm on, I have 16 million likes and yet 25 30,000 people see the show on a nightly basis I mean that's a lot it should be quadruple that so that's why I have I'll keep working with Facebook and I'll keep going on Twitter but I have switched over a lot of my stuff to a, to an app called hear me out hear me out the hear me out app and you can download it to your phone on any iTunes store or the Google store or whatever. And if you follow me, Rusty Humphreys, I update it a couple times a day. And they have assured me, and I've talked to the guys that are heads of this company. It's like, think of it, it's Twitter with audio, but we're getting in on the ground level here. And so here's a chance for, think about what it would be like if conservatives ran Facebook or Twitter. So our voices can continue to be heard. And that's why I'm asking you to please follow me on the Hear Me Out app. Okay? And do me a favor when you follow me. All you do is download the app, find me, Rusty Humphreys, and sometimes you have to type in Rusty Humphreys with no space between Rusty and Humphreys because i that's my mistake. Or you could find me hashtag Rusty. And then when my picture comes up, you just, you just push the plus sign that makes you follow me. And... Um, We'll keep you posted on what's going on. And it's a good way to go around these uh, these nasty, nasty companies that that blame themselves for Trump winning. And so because they think Trump won uh, and he shouldn't have, uh, they're going to penalize you and me because they think we're stupid. Okay. Lily says, the second time today I've seen you at Right Wing News. I like it. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Bill says, do you believe there are 4,000 sealed federal indictments? I don't know. I, I do not know, I'll be honest. Carl says, what's the best source of unfiltered conservative news deplorable here in Fort Worth? Um, I like the nice folks at Right Wing News. They do a great job. Um, I like, you know, Drudge does a good job. There's another great company, um, Western Journalism, that does a good job. So there's a lot of, a lot of good companies out there uh, that, that are honest. 
Um, you just have to find him. I, I post a lot of stuff on my Facebook page. You could find me, Rusty Humphreys, and uh, follow me there. And um, I try to post stuff all the time. And so you can easily get what I think is the honest truth, Carl. Thank you for asking. Reagan says, One American News is a good network news station that isn't fake news, although it's owned by a big liberal. One American News is. Let's see. Randy says, I hashtag once, but I follow and listen in on you that on the Hear Me Out app. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate it. Randy, give me a thumbs up. All right, everybody, do me a favor. Thumbs up right now. Thumbs ups right now. Give me some love. Give me some thumbs ups. And would you share this video? Would you please share it? Tonight's show was, was an important one, and I want as many people to see this over the weekend. Maybe even type in there, this is an important show about that Trump book. Hear the truth. I've watched this show. Rusty's telling the truth. Something like that. If you do that, boy, I would really, really uh, be appreciative, okay? Also, please follow me on the Hear Me Out app. And if you want my book, it's not expensive. It's at uh, Amazon. Seven ways to win political debates to your liberal family and friends and still keep them as family and friends. That would be very appreciated as well. I like the audio version that uh, I did at Audible. And if you're not a member of Audible... You can go to Audible, sign up, and get my book for free if it's your first one. So that'd be cool, too. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back on... No, I'm not going to be here Monday. I'll check in on Monday, but the big game is on Monday. So I'll do a quick check-in on Monday, but I'm not going to do a full show. But then the rest of the week, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West. And you can always find my podcast, The Rusty Avery's Rebellion, iTunes, Stitcher, and Place Great Podcasts. All right. So that's it. May God bless you. May God bless America. My name is Rusty Humphreys. Thanks for watching. This is The Rusty Humphreys Rebellion.